This is Andy Tirado with the Motor Age Tech Tip brought to you by Autel. Join me as we discuss the differences between coding and programming. When it comes to industry terminology, things can get very confusing, and there's a reason for that. Between coding and programming, and variant coding, and proxy setting, and initializing, these are just some of the terms out there in our industry, in our day-to-day -day life as technicians, to try to get the job done. So let's go ahead and jump in, decipher what this all is. So if you're going to be doing programming, programming is different from coding. Programming means you're going to be installing software into a module. Now that module may be a brand new module that's absolutely blank, and before it can even work and be integrated into the network, it requires software to be installed into the unit. Now, we used to download software directly from cartridges and flashing. Today, everything is downloaded. So we download that software from the OEM site into that unit using the J2534 equivalent or OEM equipment. Coding, on the other hand, is much easier. Coding is simply changing parameters of an existing program module. So we're not changing the software that makes the operating segment work. We are simply modifying segments of it that the OEM allows us to modify. Like a variant coding is going to be one of those. Verifying and changing coding seat heater parameters. That's going to be another one. Believe it or not, resetting a oil service is no longer just resetting a light. We actually have to put parameters into there, and that's part of coding. As far as today's example and what I'm going to be doing, I'll be using my Altel 909 tool. If you have any other Altel tool, like an Altel Ultra, Understand that these functions will be very, very similar as well as the screens that you'll be seeing today. Now, to get this done, we need to make sure that we have our scan tool and our vehicle communication device, or what we call short a VCI. Now, when it comes to VCIs, you'll have different options depending on the tool that you have. Some VCIs will be small, like this dongle right here. Now, understand, in this case, this is an Altel VC200. This small dongle does support J2534 standards, which means I can use this to actually program a module or download software into a module. Not all of these dongles will do that. So understand that Altel does offer this small dongle that is J2534 compliant. Typically, when you're looking at J2534 boxes or VCIs, this is what you're used to seeing. Something a little larger, a little more robust. Technology has been to our favor and is allowed to shrink some of that. So this is still considered a VCI. If you have an Ultra, you may have something called a VCMI because now that VCI is also integrated with the oscilloscope and onboard rechargeable battery. With programming, we have a couple of options. Now let's not forget the difference between programming and coding. Programming, we are loading software into the module itself. I mentioned earlier it may be a blank module, brand new module. We're going to have to load software before that module comes to life in our network. Something else that falls into the programming segment is going to be software updates. So you're working on a vehicle that has a technical service bolt and you found that, this, that a software update is viable and it's available to remedy your problem. So you would then download that software update into that vehicle's module to go ahead and fix that issue. Now understand the difference between coding and programming. Programming, we are modifying the software packet, modifying the software itself. So the software version may change if you're doing an update, okay? When it comes to coding, we are simply changing the parameters. Now, to get into the programming segment, we can do this in different ways. I can go ahead and go full OEM, invest into OEM equipment that would then give me the OEM software. I would need an active subscription and then we can go ahead and start programming in that fashion. I would need to do that with each and every manufacturer I plan to work on. So it can get pricey. Now, you have another option where I can use the OEM software on my Windows-based laptop, and then instead of using the equipment, I would use Autel's J2534 pass-through and tie this to the OEM software to do my programming. Autel brings yet another solution if you didn't want to get into learning all the user interface, downloading all the software into the computers, laptops, having multiple laptops, multiple subscriptions, you can access Remote Expert. By accessing Remote Expert, that Remote Expert would have the OEM subscription software, and they would simply use your J2534 remotely to then program the vehicle you're working on. Now that we've covered the differences between coding and programming, 
Let's see some examples on this vehicle. Now, before we go there, good common practices. We want to make sure we have good battery voltage, good vehicle battery voltage, preferably a voltage stabilizer, particularly if you're going to go into programming. That is an industry must. We want to make sure that our tablet has good charge, has the latest software, and your VCI also has the latest software. Although most of your VCIs may update through Wi-Fi, it isn't a bad idea to have a common practice to connect a USB cable and make sure that it has the latest firmware before you start working on a vehicle. So now that we're in the vehicle, I've already profiled it. I'm going to go into control unit and you'll notice I have a lot of options when it comes to modules. When it comes to the coding, you'll see that I'll have multiple different segments that will let me alter and adjust accordingly. So I could just kind of run through a couple, give you some examples, show you what these menus are what things I can set when it comes to the coding, uh, once again, not the programming side. So as I go into this segment and I go into adaptation, for example, I can go in here and adjust a couple of things. As you can see, I can go ahead and adjust the idle RPM correction if I needed to and leave it in that setting. I can also uh, take it out of production mode, which would be uh, our PDI, pre-delivery inspections. So that's uh, something that happens in the OEM, happens in the dealership. We can change that dynamometer functions for those of you that are doing repair and also running uh, emission dynamometer or running uh, aftermarket dynamometers for uh, horsepower and torque verification tuning specs. Uh, we can see that through there. Give me those options. I can go to the transmission end of it. Same option. Go into some adaptations, and we can now see the activate the product once in the production mode. Distance data dynamometer, once again, is there the individual gear display that comes up on the screen. Allows to change that as well. There's still one Tiptronic. If I go in here, we can enable or disable that. So as far as your uh, steering wheel gear select, your gear, your gear switch, we can change that by making it active or inactive. So I would just go into the setting, and you'll get a drop-down menu like so that shows active or inactive. We will keep this active for this customer because uh, they quite like it that way. So we can go ahead and exit out of the transmission. And we're going to go into, uh, let's go into air conditioning. Let's just switch it up, not to go in and order and cover every single one in there. So as I go into the air conditioning side, we have the comfort parameter for start stop. So this function is very interesting. And when it comes to coding, it's something you can do for your customer that they would absolutely love you. So if you notice, you have the comfort parameter all the way from 0 to 20. 0 to 255, this parameter is how long the engine will stay off during the start-stop for AC comfort level. So you can change this value, and if you, you have a customer saying, you know what, this start-stop start stop feature um, is great. You know, we have to have it. I can't turn that off. So we're going to go ahead and let it run due to emission purposes. But, man, just the, the AC gets warm before it actually starts up. That's one parameter you can change on this vehicle. And I understand that every vehicle is a little different. So what I have here is not going to apply in every single car out there. So understand that that will change. We have an after run parking heater or parking ventilation that will run into that one. We have auxiliary heater, air quality sensor sensitivity. We can go into there and look at what that sensitivity is. So air quality sensitivity is in this case, we have a uh, automatic sensor that will turn on the recirculation. Uh, for the customer. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and change this because the customer has said, you know, that sometimes some smells come in even though there's recirculation on. So we can go ahead and change the air quality sensitivity to maximum, hit OK. We have now, you get the message that it said OK, we've now changed that value. So now we've made the air quality sensor uh, more sensitive. So it's going to react to to the values a little faster. Um, once again, we can go through different modes here just in 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 the HVAC system alone, I have three pages worth of information that I can go ahead and change. Uh, earlier in the other modules, I didn't scroll through any pages, but if we go back to the engine control module, for example, we can see how many pages we have there. Um, that's one page on this one, for example, transmission, I believe is also one page. So those are some of the examples that I have on that side. Electronic central, uh, central electronic module, uh, we can even also see the locking module, for example, and that'll let you go ahead and turn the automatic locks on or off. Those are functions that we can do. Uh, acoustic warning for rear lid for the assistant as far as making sure that 
It's not going to hit anybody on the head. Those are things you can turn on, off, increase sensitivities. Uh, adaptive light functions, we can also change that. So if I go into here and go into the warning lid assistant, right, we go into the site that's not active, and we can go ahead and change that rear lid assistant if it's it's supplied in this vehicle. So right now it says lid not it's not active. We'll activate this function. So now we're going to get that function to finally operate. And I'll now advise the customer if that lid is being closed and could potentially hit them in the head, right? So now we're, we're doing customers a lot more favors. And these are some of the examples when it comes to coding as into what that looks like. That covers today's tech tip with coding versus programming and hope you have a better understanding to differentiate the difference in terminology the industry serves up when it comes to coding and programming. This wouldn't have been made possible or as seamless without the use of my Autel 909. Stay tuned for more Motor Age Tech Tips brought to you by Autel. <laughs>